Right, so this is a light emitting diode. Now, we all know about these. You put a voltage in it, it emits some light. Close up, it looks like this. What it is, is a tiny bit of silicon in there, a tiny bit of semiconductor. When we put a current through, we force the holes and the electrons to recombine, and that emits a photon. So we bang a little few volts through there. Hey, presto, it lights up. Big whoop. Now, the interesting question of this, really, is when you start to think about motors and generators. Now, motors and generators are essentially the same thing. You put some current in a motor, it'll spin. You spin a motor, it'll generate. You've got to ask yourself, haven't you? Can these operate in exactly the same way? We put some current in and we'll get a light. If we put some light in, will we get a current? So here's my LED connected up to my voltmeter. It's reading on volts because current, to be honest, is going to be minuscule. But let's see if we can drive a voltage by shining a light on that. And hey presto, it jumps up. To, well, depends how far away the light is, but there we go, a volt. Well, I think that was cool. So an LED will operate in reverse. You put some current, you'll get some light. You put some light, you'll get some current. True enough, it's going to be microamps in a tiny thing like this. Oh, if only there were a way to get a whole load of these to get together in one big block. Okay, I've had a collection and I've got these. That's an undercovered lighting unit. Broken, obviously. Some LEDs in there. We've got this as an LED torch. Got some nice strips of LEDs in there. And ah, we've got this, which is an LED floodlight. So let's get those apart. So having pulled those apart, we get three different combinations of those LEDs. Now, these are surface mount LEDs. They're actually made in exactly the same way. But on the little uh, plastic LED I showed you, that's got a little cup, as you saw, the light's coming out, it's been focused, reflected and focused. And this one is exactly the same thing, but on a flat surface. And what they've done is bung a bit of yellow on it. And that's actually some epoxy, and it's got a phosphor in there. And that phosphor is a terbium uh, aluminium oxide doped with cerumium, or it's called a YAG phosphor. The light LED emits a blue light, and the yellow shifts it and mixes with it to create the white light that we see. So this is the same LED, only in a flat panel and covered with a phosphor. And so we can get loads of them all in a block really, really easily. In these three types, we've got one where they're all individual and they've been put on a circuit board. Same thing, all individual and put on a circuit board. And here is the newest type, it's called um, chip on board or a cob LED. And here is where they put each little chip on there and put a, the phosphor on as a big coating over the whole lot. They're really very much cheaper. These are individual components. This one is made to charge on a battery, and so we've got a plus and a minus, and we've got this massive resistor here as a current lim limiting resistor, because when we're putting power into an uh, LED, we don't want to put too much in and we'll blow the thing up. When we want power out, of course, we don't want that to happen, so I've snipped the resistor. So I'm going to take my positive here and my negative here. These ones are meant to run on mains, and you see a little group of them, resistor, little group, resistor, and they're tiny. So that kind is going to be an absolute pain to work with. This kind, you need to identify the resistor, snip it. With cobs, they come with no current limiting at all. You're meant to put current limiting on if you want to use them. But these cobs all come just on board with a black and a red wire sticking off them. So they're dirt cheap and dead easy to use. We're going to do this one. This one next to useless to us. Okay, same thing. This time here is our board of 20 of those LEDs attached to our voltmeter. I'm going to shine a torch on them and we'll see what happens. Now, if I shine the torch that far away, we get 1.7 volts easily. As I move the light closer, the voltage goes up, of course, because it's intensity of light. So 2.1 volts out of that little panel. Awesome, so we've got a voltage out of it, but we can get a voltage out of something by sticking two nails in a lemon. Something like that will give you a voltage. The real question is, of course, is, is it generating some power? Can we charge something with it? Well, I've connected a capacitor here. It's a 1,000 microfarad capacitor at 50 volts. I've connected it uh, to in parallel to the board, and we're going to shine a light on it. And if we put a light on that, what we can see is that voltage going up. As that voltage climbs up, it's charging the capacitor because it's actually measuring the voltage across the capacitor. So we're charging something now. So now we're getting real power out of it.
Now, obviously, it's not very much, but then a standard solar cell wouldn't do very well in these conditions. We're indoors under fluorescent lights, and it's raining outside, which is why I'm not doing this in the sunshine, because there isn't any. Anyway, we can actually get real power out of that. Okay, so I did some back-of-the-envelope calculations with this thing. This is a solar cell I got from Radio Shack. It cost £84, and sure, I probably paid well over the odds for it. But it was interesting to be able to compare a bit of silicon with what's going on here. So, why would you bother? Because these things are about three pence each. So, if you built one that size, it's going to cost you about three to £400. A hell of a lot more. And of course, you wouldn't bother. You wouldn't bother buying them new, but... These things, actually, are stupidly easy to find. They're stupidly easily found as scrap. I mean, I've got a whole box full of them right here. I've got about 30, 35 of them. And they cost me nothing. And they've just been sitting there waiting for me to do something with them. Now, I've thought about lighting. Equally, I could just screw them all together on a panel and make my own solar cell. And that's my thought now, is let's get a panel of those made together, make up a large-sized solar cell, and test that solar cell against this solar cell because the performance of these based on the calculations of what it does on there actually they're not that far off and I was quite amazed by that so putting together your own solar cell using LEDs particularly these COB LEDs if you find them I think would be a great way of making your own solar cell for next to nothing anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching